It is so good to be back at Hill City. Guys, I have missed you. Nate and I, well, Nate's been gone even longer, but I've been gone for two weeks, and it felt like two months. Like, for real. I, we were out in California, and it was beautiful, and I loved the opportunity to go, but it felt like it was so long. I missed you. When we were out there, I was talking to Nate, and I said, babe, you know, this, it, we were in San Diego, California. If anyone has been there, it's gorgeous. Um, it, I could stand it a little hotter. I'm like, put it on 100 degrees, and I am golden. <laughs> But it, it's like really cool. Most folks favorite. It's like 80 degrees and then like goes down to 70 or high 60s in the evening. Nate's favorite. Um, but anyways, when we were out there, I thought, man, I am loving this time with my babies, loving the time with my husband and my mom. She went with us, which was awesome. But I am longing to be home. And when I, you know, when I was processing that, I thought, God, like, it's interesting how you do that. You know, you'll move us to different spaces, but we'll still have a longing for the place that our heart belongs. Amen. And so while I was out there, we, we had been there for just uh, three days and the Lord just began to really speak. And so this, this message um, that I'm going to bring to you today is a little bit different than anything I've ever done, to be very honest. The Lord has given me words and insight to things that he's doing and has done and is to come. Um, but he's never done it in such a way that I need to be mindful of what I'm sharing. So you're going to notice me today looking a little bit more at the pages in front of me. Okay? And so just go with me on this journey as I try to step and be obedient to what the Lord is saying how many of you know it's easy to stay comfortable, but it's best to stay obedient? And so that's my desire. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your goodness that chases us down. I thank you for your grace that covers us. I thank you for your love that speaks a better word. Today, Father, I ask that as you gave it to me, it would come to them. That every heart would receive exactly what it is you're speaking and breathing over them. May every word be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. So when I stepped back into my house after being away for two weeks, as soon as my foot crossed that threshold, I felt, the atmosphere is different here. And it literally, I realized day over day when I was out in California, I was stepping in and it felt different. But when I stepped back into my home, I realized there's a goodness in this house of mine. So many times we walk and we live in this world totally unaware of the goodness that we're sitting under. Do you know that you're sitting in this room and covered by a grace that if you didn't even know Jesus, if you never even heard his name, you're still operating under a covering of goodness. He sets the raindrops in the clouds. He gives it the earth, its nutrients. He feeds the beast. All of that is done under his watchful care and direction. You know, I've heard so many people say, oh, well, you know, we don't have to worry about Hades. It's right here on earth right now. Oh, no. There is a grace and an open heaven we live in here. But we must be aware of that goodness. As the Lord spoke to me, he showed me Exodus 33, which is a very familiar passage. I think, Pastor Jim, this is one of your favorite, where Moses says, Lord, if I'm to do this, then you show me your glory. And in Exodus 33, when Moses puts this demand on God, God says, okay, Moses, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. Rock, New Testament, Petrus, Peter on whom this rock I will build my church. 
So God says, Moses, I will hide you in the cleft of this rock. And when I do, my goodness will pass you by. Those are the words of the Lord, that his goodness would pass Moses by. You can't see it, Moses. You cannot see my face, for you will die. But you will see my goodness pass you by. The Lord spoke to me and he said, my people have been watching my goodness pass by. And some of them haven't even been aware that it was I. You are sitting in answered prayers right now. Today, you're in this room and you are literally sitting in answered prayers, but you're unaware because the goodness of God didn't stop at answering the prayer. The goodness of God continued to pursue you and chase you down. So the answered prayer became a want for the future. So you began to want for the future and then started to sit again in your answered prayer. And God answered that prayer and you began to want for the future and you were sitting in your answered prayer prayer. We were at the beach when we were out there and Mia, she didn't really like the sand or the water or the beach, any part of it. And so she was really kind of sitting on the towel and not letting it touch her. But she loves birds. And of course, y'all know they're seagulls and they're so fun to watch. They'll dive in and, and, and just, you know, kind of just float almost in the air. And she was sitting on the blank. She said, Mommy, bird, I want to go see it. I want to go see it. I said, Baby, then go. Oh, the sand. Baby, go see the bird. She'd have nothing to do with it. I can't, I can't. So she didn't. The next day, we're at the pool, their favorite place, of course, if they don't like the sand. We were at the pool, and we're sitting there and just playing. And all of a sudden, the seagull swoops down and lands. I thought, that's interesting. I haven't seen too many seagulls away from the shore. It wasn't like we were close to the beach, you know. And this seagull came and it kept walking. And it got so close to my Zoe that I said, baby, you better back up because that thing might be coming for your nose. And so Mia was like, mom, seagull, is that what it is? Yeah, it's a bird. And I turned and I looked at her. I said, Mia, you were just praying yesterday. You were just hoping and asking mommy to take you to see that bird. And God brought one to you. She was sitting in the pool and she's a little baby. She was unaware that the very thing that she was crying over the day before because she couldn't touch, the Lord had deposited right in front of her so close that it almost ate her little nose. We have to be mindful and remember. See, the problem was with the Israelites, it's so easy to be like the Israelites. The Israelites were in bondage and, and, and in slavery, being beaten with rods and, and, and every moment of their day accounted for. And so Moses leads them out and brings them into freedom. Answered prayer. But when they find themselves in the midst of the freedom, they find themselves grumbling about their answered prayer. Well, the food was better. Well, did you, why would you lead us out here to die? See, it's easy for us to find ourselves in a default mode of looking for the next answered prayer and forgetting to celebrate the answered prayer here. You cannot forget where you've been and what you have asked the Lord for because forgetfulness, and write this down if you are taking notes, forgetfulness will steal your praise and hold your gratitude captive. Forgetfulness will steal your praise and hold gratitude captive. What opens up the gates 
to the Lord. What opens up your experiential moments with God? It says, enter his courts with praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. To experience the fullness of God, you must remember the answered prayer you are sitting in. So here we are, the whisper of the Lord, the breath of God that I felt speaking so clearly. God is moving. I have been moving in a quiet and gentle manner. Some of you have looked for an overt move of God from the beginning, but I have been moving gently, powerfully, quietly in your midst. Do you not perceive it? The Lord spoke to me. He said, this hill city, this is a word for hill city church. This is his healing house. That we are Hill, H-I-L-L, city. And we are placed as a light on top of a hill, no question. And we will shine in the darkness and take our hill in every hill of Pittsburgh. But we are also Heal, heal, H E A L, city. He has called us Heal City, H E A L. And the Lord is declaring to the city of Pittsburgh through Hill City, He is declaring Heal City, Heal City, Heal. City. I've never heard a story, Pastor Jim, of a man who's contended for land outside of scriptures, stood on a promise of God, And said, let's do this thing. There was a dream the Lord gave you. A dream that Pastor Jim had. And in this dream, he saw water flowing from that hill. And and the Lord brought him closer. And he saw when Pastor Jim was brought close, it was people. Well, the Lord has spoken and is saying, it's not only people, but it is healing that will flow from the hill that will flood the city, that will roll down into the valleys and bring those who have not known the goodness of God, the healing to their heart. To this city and from this city to this nation. Ezekiel 47. And I'm going to kind of Speed read through this, but I want you to read it because this is what the Lord has been doing, has already been doing, has already been doing. Do you perceive it? Ezekiel 47. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gateway that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, Every step, every moment has been measured of the Lord. He measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankles. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Look at your neighbor and say, the waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the rivers go. You are rivers of living water. You are the people from the dream. You are those who are pouring out into the streets, pouring out the rivers of God into the streets. And everywhere the rivers go will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there. For they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be the fishermen will stand by it from Engedi to Englem. Then they will, there will be places for spreading of their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds of fish as the great sea, exceedingly many. Along the bank of the river, will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither. Their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their marshes will not be healed. I passed that up, I'm sorry. But they will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. When the Lord began to show me this and speak that this is Heal, H-E-A-L, city, I want you to see what I saw. It was as if it was a scroll that was opened before me, a page that laid out like Santa's checklist. There are those of you who were brought in at the same time on the cusp of or stirred to walk and move in healing from abuse that has tried to define you your entire life. It has constantly told you you're worthless and not good enough. But Hill City has been the cleft of the rock for his goodness to pass by, offering safety in his atmosphere. Here, because of pure hearts. The pure in heart shall see God. There are those of you who are in here, and these are real life, true stories, testimonies of you in here who have walked in rejection all your life. You felt no place and misunderstood. Even here, you felt that. But God called you to stay. Why? Because there was safety here. Here to heal. For you to actually receive grace and illumination to, the, to receive, to get to the root of the rejection and the projection of that. There are some who have come in here who have carried shame. You didn't even know what it was you carried, but it was shame. You carried shame for being a woman, but feeling more inside of you. You felt shame for being imperfect, imperfect in your decisions. You felt shame for being a minority and felt you would never really be heard. 
The enemy tried stealing your voice. That's what he was after. But here at Hill City, he has given your voice back. You have seen women empowered and have stepped into your own power. You have experienced Holy Spirit's love as he's kissed your past, present, and future. He placed a cry, a divine cry, in the heart of a young, influential couple. And that cry was to bring all tribes and tongues into a place where the voiceless don't just speak, but they sing. And they sing together. And as a result of that, you know for the first time, someone of influence, someone who's different from you, has your back for real. Some of you have never been told about the Holy Spirit, but now you know him personally. And you have found joy and freedom from things you could never get freed from before. Some have been in church for years, but this is the first time you've had a true life practical teaching that God truly can. Since you've been hidden in the cleft of his rock, there is a daughter who's been reconciled to a father after 20 plus years. There's a daughter who has hope of being restored to a father after 15 years of being apart. There are those of you who have come in here wound tight in performance and perfection, playing to man's fiddle for approval, but now you have found freedom, rest, restitution, and restoration in his presence and in his approval. Some of you have simply realized you aren't crazy. Those are your words. Like your past season suggested. There is a woman and a man who have found freedom from the guilt of past abortions. A weight that set out to destroy you. And you've allowed God's forgiveness to reign. Some of you have found yourself questioning your identity and belonging. You've come here and now you know he found you. You've realized identity with a certain thing or position is not the focus, but identity in him alone. So the issues you had, the insecurities that reigned fell away. And you've realized you've always been found in him. Wondering, some of you, why you keep thinking in this season of your life, since you've been here at Hill City, you keep wondering, why do I have a new irritability with family members shaming or abusive nature? He wants you to know he has brought you here in safety. And if you recall, two years ago, or a year and a half, whatever it was that I shared, a message that I felt the Lord gave me, he's reminding you that he reveals all things to heal all things. He reveals all things to heal all things. 
God has said, this is a house of healing. It's safe. It's his. Not to leave you as you are, but to call you to who you have always been, but failed to see. You are in the midst of a move. You are the move. You are the river. Those who are pure in heart will see God. The more is here, the more is now, and you will see more. The overt move of God will consume us, but embrace here and now. Your hearts have been healed. And from your heart, your mouth speaks and your destiny is created. If the worship team will come. In Matthew 21, it's a story of Jesus going into the temple. And when he goes into the temple, he sees lots of things going on. There's money changers in there. They're selling doves and animals and all this. And when he goes in, he starts turning over the tables and the seats. And so many times when I've heard that story preached, I thought, God, where are you taking me with this story? How does this line up? I don't understand. When I've heard that preached, I always felt like, man, the Lord was angry. And like when it was preached, oh, and he's going to wreck this house and the judgment of the Lord is coming. And yes, that is true. Does he start with his kids? Yeah, I start with mine at home first before I ever start with yours. Right? I mean, that's just, that's just fact. That's just natural. So yes, that is very true. But what I love in the scripture is after Jesus has gone into the temple and he has turned over those tables and the money has gone everywhere. It says in that same house, in that same temple, he went in and healed the blind and the lame. The tables have been flipped upside down in your life. Some of you are in here and you have just seen the tables flip. You feel like everything's chaos and confusion. You have not yet been in the healing river of the Lord. Jesus didn't come to flip your tables and leave you undone. He came in to right side up things, to heal your eyes that you may have proper perception in seeing his goodness pass you by, that your legs may be healed, that you would walk in purpose by his grace, by his goodness, by his love. Do you perceive what he is doing? Have you taken note of where you are today in relation to where you've been every year prior? you taken note to realize his healing has truly transformed your life you may have thought I came here to Hill City for one thing but God's made it your safety God's made it the place where he'd hide you in the rock that you may see his goodness if everyone would just stand with me. I wanna 
us just to take a few minutes and we're going to close our eyes. And as I read some of your stories, I want you to right now in this moment ask Holy Spirit, let's do this together. Holy Spirit, show me your healing rivers in my life. Show me what you have done for me.